Hey y'all, this is Audra. I have Bichette's disease and hypermobility spectrum disorder. Both of these conditions are genetic and I have learned over the almost 40 years of my life how to cope with them, deal with them, and how to work with doctors to help relieve my symptoms. I'm here to help give you those same tips, information, and just awareness of invisible illnesses everywhere. We're all around you, walking around in Walmart, at the mall, at the gas station. Just because we look fine doesn't mean we're okay. Also, I am not a medical professional. Please always contact and speak with your physician before you try any of my tips or tricks, and always communicate clearly with your doctor about what's going on with you. Don't go to the doctor with makeup on. It's all plain. They are trained to look at you and see what is wrong with your skin. And unfortunately, until I started going into the doctor with no makeup on, it was much harder for me to get help because I was covering up the biggest red flag for my physician, my red face. Don't be ashamed. It's okay. It's a natural body response that helps doctors notice something is genuinely wrong with you. I have had a lot of symptoms and a lot of things happen to me in my life, having two conditions that actually affect every single part of my body. And so I figured the easiest way to be able to go about telling you all about this massive amount of information is to start in chronicle, chronological order of what happened to me first. My story actually begins when I was born. <clears throat> Most people go their whole life and not have their autoimmune disease triggered until they're older. Unfortunately, mine was triggered at birth. My mother was obese and she had high blood pressure. A doctor prescribed her a calcium channel blocker. That's actually not a bad thing. A lot of people take calcium channel blockers and they work very well to help control their blood pressure. However, it seems as an adult now and have taken, I have taken uh, calcium channel blockers myself, I can attest I do not handle them well. Um, they have now classified them as an allergy for me, even though I do not have what's called anaphylaxis, which is where your throat closes up and you can't breathe. But I actually have a uh, heart response. My heart actually absolutely dislikes calcium channel blockers. So I was in my mother's womb. She was taking medication, calcium channel blocker, blood pressure medication. I didn't seem to have too many problems because she was only taking half of the dose when I was in utero, but the day that she went to go have me uh, removed via C-section, I had problems. Uh, my heart rate was well over 300. My mother, my brother, my dad, and my grandmother all attest to this. I, obviously, I have to go off what they say. I was not able to remember this. But they seriously thought I was going to die. The hospital I was born in had to contact another hospital that had children specialists. That hospital asked, what did you give the mother? And they concluded that whatever they gave my mom was probably the problem. And if they let me just burn it out of my system, I should be fine. Which, that was the case. However, that triggered a, a cascading condition uh, called supraventricular tachycardia that I have had since birth. I've had it on and off. I can get it when I'm upset. Um, I can get it if I work too hard, if I'm too tired. It's a condition that is, is still to this day, I have it. I, it is better controlled now with medication, but when I was young, I didn't have medication, and it, it was something that I just had to learn to cope with. Um, even as an adult, I was having high heart rates up to 180, and I wasn't going to the doctor because to me it wasn't that big of a deal. So I, throughout my entire life, have had this condition. I had it as a child, as a teenager, and now as an adult. So now here we are. These are the things that I personally have found that can help. It doesn't mean it's going to. I tried the bearing down technique, the splashing your face with cold water technique. All of those things never really worked for me because what was wrong wasn't actually a nerve problem. It was Bichette's disease. So, but these other things have helped me calm down and control my emotions or what's happening in my you know, body, even if my heart is going 90 minutes. So, the very first thing I discovered 
was lavender oil. Now I have a uh, Serenity do doTERRA. I, I this, I'm not sponsored. This is just stuff that I have used. Um, my good friend here, she sells it. She actually just gave me this bottle. And when you put that on your temples and your wrists, it can help to calm you down. It doesn't mean it's going to calm your heart rate down. If you have a condition that is making your heart go crazy, you probably can't calm your heart down, but you can at least calm your mind. And lavender is excellent at that. So that's the first thing I ever discovered that could help. Uh, the next thing I discovered was um, Suco 10. I don't care what brand you get. Get a good brand. Do research. Make sure there's no fillers, chemicals. All that stuff is going to make you worse. So do your best to try to get something that doesn't have a whole lot of that chemical-based junk in it. Suco 10 is a heart vitamin. It helps. It's a like an oil and it helps to strengthen your heart. And if you're having that problem, you are going to need a, a strong heart. Um, then I also have oh, an Omega Guard from Shakely. Shakely is a brand of vitamins that I like to use. They are very much tested through purity. They don't have chemicals in them, and they are just a good brand. Once again, I am not sponsored by anybody. Uh, Omega-3s is what Omega Guard is, and you do need Omega-3s if you, just as a person in general. Omega-3s help to eradicate free radicals in your body that we get from just living our lives. So I would recommend that to anybody, but definitely if you're having supraventricular tachycardia, then you need to be taking something like that with your doctor's permission, of course. Everything I say with doctor's permission. As I got older... Um, into my, oh, probably 20s, I started having an increase, especially after my second child, of my tachycardia. And I started doing research because I was so sick and tired of having it. I was already on blood pressure medication. Uh, Bichette's disease actually can cause blood pressure, high blood pressure, because of the inflammation of all of your vascular system. And so it affects your blood pressure. It's like having a garden hose and you squeeze the garden hose and the water builds up on the other side and there's only a trickle coming through on the other on the opposite end and it's because that pressure. So inflammation is like that. It causes that kind of a mechanism on the inside of a body. So it's like, you know, crunching down on a garden hose. So your body is working harder to try to push that blood through that inflamed vessels and it makes your blood pressure go up. I discovered that cayenne pepper. Now you can do your own research on cayenne pepper, but cayenne pepper is actually extremely good for your heart and your vascular system in general. I particularly like taking cool cayenne because this stuff can make you have heartburn. If you have a problem with heartburn, <clears throat> it's gonna probably do it. I wouldn't recommend taking it at night before bed because it will burn while you're trying to sleep. Uh, I would take it with food for sure. But um, I noticed even with my husband who has Tetralogy of Flow, which is another invisible illness that people can't see, he looks fine. Um, his heart is not fine. Uh, he had an improvement in his heart and his blood pressure when uh, I give him cold cayenne. So those are the three supplements orally that I, I personally take. The medication I take is called Carvedilol. And Carvedilol actually changed my life. Um, after my third child, I had severe supraventricular tachycardia. And what sort of supraventricular tachycardia is, is where the top part of your heart is beating so fast, it eventually gets the bottom part of your heart beating so fast as well. So sometimes you might have a heart rate that is super high, but your pulse is still normal. And that's because the top part of the chamber is fluffing like a butterfly and the bottom chamber is still pumping at what it needs to be pumping, maybe elevated or not, but it, sometimes that has happened to me. And it is a very strange sens sensation and I don't like it. Uh, also, supraventricular tachycardia has caused me to, to develop PVCs and AVCs, which I did not have as a young person. And those are pre-beats in both the, I have them both in the ventricular part of my heart and 
the um, arterial part of my heart. That's what those two things are. And I did not develop those until I myself took a calcium channel blocker because do the doctors insisted that it was fine and I was going to be fine and it's no problem. And I took it twice, actually. I took it once when I was in my in my later 20s. I took a calcium channel blocker for almost a year and that was a horrible experience. That is actually when my uh, supraventricular tachycardia became so bad that I was on heart monitors all the time and they were trying to put me on a whole bunch of crazy medications and they switched me off of, car off of the calcium channel blocker and it took a little while but it did kind of resolve itself a little bit. Then later on in life, uh, about seven years later, they were like, oh, let's try this calcium channel blocker. And I was very reluctant. I wasn't happy about that. I didn't want to do it. And the doctor who was a neurophysiologist, which is a doctor that studies the electrical components of the heart, what makes the heart beat, uh, gave it to me. I took it for a while, um, probably about six months. And I actually ended up developing even worse Bichette's problems. I ended up having a blood clot come out of my heart, go into my left arm. Um, I had PVCs every five beats, which isn't enough for them to say that I needed like surgery, but I didn't want surgery. I do not want surgery, um, but it wasn't enough for them to really want to worry about it. But for me, I feel every PVC I have, every AVC I have. So for me, it feels like a car downshifting too low of a gear. And it's, so it's like a coke, coke feel. And it's not very comfortable. But I was dealing with that. So I meet, as soon as I had the blood clot, I was done. I said, no, we're not doing this anymore. At that point, though, unfortunately, it had already triggered a catastrophic layer of my Bichette's disease and I developed other problems as well. So you have to be careful with what you take. Do not just take anything your doctor gives you. And if you do and it's not working, tell them, I'm not going to take this. We're going to try something else. It's your body. You have to live in it. You need to be responsible for your own health. So that was my journey with that Carvedilol. They finally put me on that and that actually resolved uh, my tachycardia. I actually now have a heart rate that is normal. Uh, I used to, at rest while sleeping, had a heart rate of 90. And that wasn't, it's not really very good. Now my heart rate actually goes down below 50 sometimes when I'm sleeping, which is actually a sign of very good cardio health. Even though I am obese myself, I do have now, with assistance, a good vascular and cardio health in spite of my Bichette's disease. You definitely want to be careful. The The highest my heart rate got recorded on a heart monitor was 187. If you're not used to that and you're not a strong person, I would not recommend just not going to the doctor. You need to go to the doctor. Superventricular tachycardia is a dangerous situation that can turn into something that can kill you very quickly. Always contact a physician. Always go to the doctor. I was under doctor care when that happened. They were aware of it. They knew what was going on. And I was comfortable with having that because I had had it most of my life. Possibly not that high all the time, but frequently I had had severe tachycardia before. So my experience is not your experience. You do what you feel safe with and what your physician feels safe with. Then there are some topical things that you can do. Um, you can distract your immune, um, your, not your immune system, your nervous system. Um, and the best way I found to do that is put something that's uncomfortable on. And where I live, we have this stuff here. It is Arnica Salve Pure Herbal Comfort. And it is from a company called Supercell. Excuse me. And they're local. I try to support my local companies. It has cayenne pepper in it. I use it for all kinds of stuff, but sometimes if you put this on your chest and your wrists and your temples and your behind your ears, your um, nervous system will focus on that instead and it'll calm you down sometimes. Not all the time. It's not going to work perfectly. Also CBD, um, CBD cell. CBD is very calming to the nervous system. So you can also take it internally. You can get gummies. CBD pills. 
I actually have capsules for CBD that are easier for me to take. I would rather take those. Also, uh, my mom used to sell Melaleuca, and they sell this Ultra Penetrate. It is so... It's a strange sensation. It's like Biofreeze on steroids. Uh, you put it on and you are cold and burning at the same time, and it is very intense. And sometimes that distraction can calm down your nervous system. Of course, the splashing water, the bearing down, uh, those kinds of exercises can help some people as well. And then also I found the vagus nerve. You want to train your vagus nerve. That has actually made a huge difference in my entire life, not just my cardiovascular health. But the vagus nerve is a nerve that sits right behind your throat here. It's stimulated when you sing, talk. Um, you can massage it with a pinpoint massager. Uh, you can massage it with your hand. You can also play sounds that will stimulate that vagus nerve. That vagus nerve is attached to literally every single part of your body. That is an organ. Um, it is, without it, you don't have your parasympathetic nervous system. Your parasympathetic nervous system controls all of those autopilot things that you don't think about. Breathing, um, digestion, uh, detoxification, all of that is connected to your vagus nerve. So, I actually, when I was having severe problems the last time I took the calcium channel blocker, I bought this whistle. It is called the Love Tuner. I'm sure you can find other ones if you don't like that. I wasn't, I don't care what it's called. I just needed something. And what you do is you actually blow in it and you do breathing exercises. And I'm going to blow in it so you can hear the tone that it does. So you do breathing exercises where you breathe out and it plays that tone, you breathe in, you hold it, breathe out with that tone, and that can actually help your vagus nerve to calm your parasympathetic nervous system down. This has helped me in more ways than I can express. If you don't have the money to buy a whistle, you can also do the ohm noise. Ohm. I know this all seems super hippie. That's okay. I understand. I've been called a hippie. That's okay. The thing is, is there are things that hippies do that help their body that we don't understand, and it does help. So those are always the borderline of hippie, and that's okay. If it helps you, what does it matter? If it's a hippie thing, I'm okay with it. I'm fine with being a hippie. Um... Another thing is, is grounding yourself. Also super hippie-ish. You get a lot of energy when you have a supraventricular tachycardia. Electricity sitting in your body. Just rotating through. It's not leaving. So if you go outside and put your bare feet on the ground, you may be able to dissipate some of that. Because it has actually been scientifically proven that the Earth draws negative energy out of us, bad energy, stuff that we don't need in our body, the ions we don't need in our body, it actually takes it out. So if you personally go out and sit on the ground, touching the earth, you can help your parasympathetic nervous system get rid of that energy that's not leaving. And that has helped me in the past as well. Once again, all things that you can try or not try, you can, and I would definitely talk to your doctor, of course, about it. Uh, I think that's everything for supraventricular tachycardia. Find clean products that are made by local people and support them. That's what I encourage you to do. Um, you will get better products from an individual person who you know, who you can talk to find out what they put in their products because every chemical we consume with autoimmune diseases is a chemical our body has to struggle to try to help get rid of and we already have struggles we don't need more so I'm going to be talking the next time about another condition I had as a young child and how I cope with it and coped with it now uh, thank you so much for tuning in and I hope you have a wonderful day